Hey there, environmental science students. This is Mr. Johnson with the second set of birds for our bird ID unit. Um, I'll remind you that you should have gone through and written down your first impressions for each bird of the entire list, and this should be a follow-up to that. Uh, remember that you should be jotting down the key notes that I've given you um, as we go on how to identify these birds, along with uh, at some point writing down notes to yourself about how you will remember each one. Uh, this video will be going over six birds instead of five, um, and so let's get started. This first bird that, that we'll be going through in this video is the Northern Cardinal. Now the Northern Cardinal is usually one that people think they can identify very easily, um, but it's not always the case. Let's actually look at it with, with the idea in our brains that we're going to approach it from a birding viewpoint. So um, we want to be able to identify this um, beyond just, oh, it's a red bird. For starters, yes, obviously it's a red bird, but that's the males. Females actually have more of a, like a brown kind of tan look to them with sort of tinted red. So um, if you looked at the picture, of the main picture on the screen, you'd probably be able to identify that as a northern cardinal. But do you think you could identify the bottom left? Well, hopefully now you can. So let's look at for some similarities. Well. What we have is we have this mohawk going on on the back of the head. Um, we call this a crest. So the crest um, on the males can be displayed or it can be kind of more combed back. So both males and females do have that mohawk, that crest. The other thing we, that we look for is we look for a black box around the face and we can see that to a lesser extent on the females, but we can still see that darkness around that beak, sort of a box. And last but not least, if we look really closely and have, if we've somehow ignored all of the rest of the bird, then we can see this orange beak on both males and females as well. On the test, I'm only going to, going to be testing you on identifying males since they are the ones that are usually the brightest. I do want you to be familiar, at least for your own personal benefit, of some of these calls. So let's play um, some calls for the cardinals. To start off with, the cardinal has a variety of sounds and it's what I associate with sort of springtime when I hear it. Sort of saying purdy, 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 purdy. Here's another call. Almost sounds like a laser. So these are all birds, or these are all the same kind of bird. They're all northern cardinals. Moving on to our next one, we have a blue jay. Blue jays are fairly large birds that are blue um, in, in general, which is not obvious by its name. Let's look at a few things, a few details of this bird. It's got a rather long tail that's got black stripes in it. It's actually got some patterning here. There's a little bit of whites, a little bit of blacks throughout the, the wings. And it's got a little bit of a crest, a little bit of a mohawk, uh, but you know not as much as the northern cardinal. The, the, this will be a little bit bigger than a northern cardinal, um, and they will both be a little bit bigger than a robin. Um, blue jays are pretty aggressive, during, especially during mating season. They're, they're known to attack... Um, even humans kind of dive bomb them if, if humans get too close to their nest. Males and females of the blue jay both look similar, um, and oftentimes their call is, is confused for what people think is a crow. So let's listen to that quick. Here is the blue jay's call. Or people sometimes think it's maybe some sort of hawk or a crow or something. Here's another kind of cool call that they make. Uh, that, yeah, that's the crow sound that people usually think of. They're like, oh, it's a, it's a crow. Nope, it's a blue jay. Here's another song, uh, another call that they make. So those are all calls that you can be familiar with. Oftentimes, um, calls are the first way people identify birds. There is sort of a three-tier approach. Um, we can identify birds based on sight, sound, and behavior. Um, so most commonly, it's the sound. Once you know birds well, it's most commonly it's the sound that you that you can use to identify the birds first. Then 
you can look up and try and actually see the bird and identify the patterning on it. And to some extent, there are some birds that I can tell what kind of species it is based on certain behaviors that it shows. Um, so the blue jay, oftentimes I'll hear the, one of those calls, especially the one where it sort of sounds like a crow before I'll be able to even see the bird. Uh, and then I'll look up and I'll, sure enough, I'll see a kind of a bigger blue bird flying through the sky. Next up we have is the American goldfinch. Uh, people see this bird and they automatically think canary. We don't have canaries in Sioux Falls and we don't have them in South Dakota actually unless they're in a pet store or unless you're talking about the baseball team in Sioux Falls. The American goldfinch does have different colored plumage depending on the, the season but what you're seeing in this picture is the, the, the summertime uh, nice bright colors. It obviously is a bright yellow bird. Um, the, it has striking black wings with a white wing bar and a little bit of black on its head, but I'm guessing you're going to see the yellow before anything else. Uh, if you look at the tail, you can see the tail. This picture is kind of blurry, but you can see the tail sort of almost comes to a fork. So this is going to be common for a lot of finches, along with this kind of cone-shaped beak. Those are really, um, you know, those two features uh, are helpful in identifying a finch in general. If you remember, we learned the house finch. Well, if you were to see the tail of the house finch and the beak of the house finch, it would be similar shapes between that and this one. So the American goldfinch. Um, it's sitting on what's called a thistle sock or niger, which is a type of seed. Um, and so this bird can be found eating the, the seeds from those kind of prickly purple flowered plants that you see sometimes. This next bird is out in full force lately. It's the red-bellied woodpecker. The red-bellied woodpecker is fairly large. Um, it is going to be um, maybe a little bit smaller than a blue jay or, or, a, or a cardinal. It's going to be about the same size as a cardinal maybe. So when we look at the red-bellied woodpecker, it's one of three different types of woodpeckers that we will be learning. Woodpeckers in general are really, really cool, but I'll explain why they're really cool in a minute. Um, the red-bellied woodpecker it gets its name, um, you, know, it, it, you would think it gets its name from a red belly, and you can, it kind of looks like it's got red there, but I that, think that's more of a shadow. The red-bellied woodpecker actually do, has mostly a white breast and belly. You'll see that the back is sort of black and white speckles all over it, almost lines across sometimes. But the big thing that gives this bird away in terms of it, its species is this red on the forehead, swooping all the way back to the back of its neck. A few specific things about woodpeckers that make them very unique is um, their physical ability to eat things just in and under the bark. So the beak is commonly known to be a good, uh, a good device that the bird uses to dig holes in trees. Um, in fact, they're able to actually even take and rapidly slam their beak into the tree, chiseling out holes, and they go after grubs in the bark. Um, their feet are specifically designed to be able to grab hold and of the bark in a way where slamming its face against the tree doesn't send that bird flying backwards, falling um, away from the tree. Also, do you notice how these tail feathers are stiff and they're rigidly, or not rigid, but they're stiff enough to prop that bird up and counteract that, that lever action. You'd imagine you the bird hits here, it would want to naturally fall back, but it doesn't because the stiff tail feathers are propped up against the tree. Also, in a video of extra bit of information I'll show you on woodpeckers, woodpeckers kind of have interesting um, tongues. And uh, again, I'll show you this to you on an optional video later on. You can take a look at it. Um, but if we think about our tongue, it's attached to the floor of our mouth just in front of our throat. Um, but the woodpecker is, well, it's attached actually on its forehead and it wraps up over the back of its its head above the brain but below the skull in between the brain and the skull and then it wraps all the way into its mouth and that's all muscle so that it can shoot a harpoon like tongue at at incredibly fast speeds and that harpoon tongue actually has little barbs little stiff barbs that point backwards so it can pull grubs out of the tree uh, so these birds are highly specialized um, and they're really really cool so let's let's listen to the, the red-bellied woodpeckers call this is one that you may hear here it is.
sort of a quirr, quirr, you can see it here. I've been hearing the red-bellied woodpecker quite a bit on my uh, as, as I've been walking my dog through the neighborhoods lately. So getting back to it, let's move on to the downy woodpecker. This little downy woodpecker has similar features to the hairy woodpecker, or excuse me, this, this uh, downy woodpecker has similar features to the red-bellied woodpecker, but is quite a bit smaller. So if you see it still has its stiff tail feathers, it still has special feet designed to grab hold of the tree, and it still has that beak that's able to peck into the bark. However, this bird is quite a bit smaller. It's only maybe five inches tall, something kind of small like that. Pretty, pretty little bird. Um, you'll notice this red on the back of its head. Well, that red shows us that it's a male. If it doesn't have the red, it's still a downy woodpecker, but it's a female version. So it's got the, a white belly, sort of black and white speckles on its back, and sort of almost a racing stripe black and white on its face. Um, the key is going to be the, the size of the bird um, and the length of the beak. So let's keep that in mind while we look at this next bird. And by the way, if you do see a small little woodpecker around the area, it's probably going to be a downy woodpecker. The possibility, um, I mean, it could be a hairy woodpecker also. So if we move on to the hairy woodpecker, you'll notice it looks very similar. It's got that white breast and belly, kind of speckled black and white back, and sort of white and black racing stripes on its face with a red head. It's the same thing in the, on the back of its head. That means it's a male. But let's look at the size of that beak. If we were to compare the size of that beak to the length of the head, it's about the same. So that tells us that it's a hairy woodpecker. Hairy woodpeckers um, sort of look like downy woodpeckers, but just oversized. Um, so if we compare the two, the, the one on the left is the downy woodpecker. The one on the right is the hairy woodpecker. You can see that, that the downy is quite a bit smaller. And that beak, if you look at the size of that beak, it is about half the size or half the length of how long or how wide the head is. It's about half of the distance across, whereas the hairy wood, woodpecker is quite a bit bigger. And we will end there. Um, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next set of birds.